All right, everyone, welcome to a great episode of Content Conversation. Today, I'm excited to have Nick Lafferty on the program. Today, we're gonna talk about his great experience in-house getting buy-in for SEO. This is actually something he just went through and uh, not a straightforward thing. Some people are good at it, some are not. Nick is clearly good at it. So uh, welcome to the program, Nick. Hey, thanks, Ross. Really happy to be here. Yeah, so I mean, you recently joined Loom. Is, is that correct, how recently? About a year ago. year ago, yeah. okay. So it's been a recent, and maybe you can talk through this timeline, of, of getting this buy-in for search over time. Your, uh, your title is head of growth marketing there, so you, you're owning multiple channels, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, obviously, search seems like it's potentially a powerful one for you, or that's what you're going to get into. So yeah, it's, it's like one of the, somebody who recently joined an organization is trying to make an argument for SEO. Within the context of Loom, you've recently successfully done this. And for people who are not aware, Loom is a screen recording software, effectively makes it easy to communicate uh, a story remotely. In our context, we're remote and we're, well, I want to screen share, quickly talk through something, yeah. make it super simple to send to someone. Loom is great for that. Uh, I don't know if that's how you would describe it, but that's how I would describe it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, spot on. <laughs> so I use it all the time and uh, probably a lot of SEO ways to get that that message out um, potentially. So when you're when you're making that, when you're thinking about search and how you can potentially promote that product, what are those kind of pre-steps you're thinking through or people should think through in order to, to make an argument for search? For sure. Yeah, I think like I've worked with a lot of really talented SEOs who are just rock stars at doing SEO and just know their job really well. And so where I've seen people fall short is when they try and sell their idea or their project or try and get buy-in to do a SEO project that they're passionate about that they think would like really positively impact the business. Um, and so my strategy here as kind of really right now the only growth focused person at Loom, only um, SEO person at Loom right now is I have to do a lot of educating. I have to tell people what is SEO. I've taught my executive team SEO 101, <laughs> which is its own set of, of challenges. And so for me, um, going into like how to get buy-in really starts with building consensus with your cross-functional peers. And so for me at Loom, I work with a lot of product managers, product owners, engineers. And so when I need to get something done, ultimately it's the VP of product or the VP of engineering that says, yes, we'll put this on the roadmap. We'll put resources behind this. But before having that conversation to me, step one is going in and building consensus with their direct reports. And I do that by having one-on-one -on -one conversations with product managers, engineers saying, hey, here's my idea, kind of like pre-selling it initially. And so then the direct report, you know, and me, we have that rapport, that relationship going into a larger executive pitch. And so they're already on my side. They get the picture. They know where they fit in this piece. And it's not new information for them. I've pre-sold it. So it's like... Uh you're talking about, let's say, the VP of product is the executive in this context. Is yeah, that sort correct. of? Yeah. And then their direct report would be kind of like manager level or maybe Yeah. And so for us, we have like a, like a director of like growth product. Uh, and so like they're either like a product owner or a director of product, whoever reports into that VP is at least at Loom. That's what my peer is. Okay. And so I kind of go and have that pre-sale conversation with them. And then when we, I go into the larger pitch, which I had a couple of weeks ago at Loom, like I had already had these conversations already. And so people, uh, I had the buy-in from my engineering counterpart, my product counterpart. And then it was just showcasing this to the executives of like, hey, oh, okay. here's the total opportunity. Here's the risks. Here's what could go wrong. And then ultimately what I need from you, here's the ask and the resourcing and like what will come out of it afterwards. Okay. So you mentioned VP product there is that is like tactically you're setting up these individual and there's probably no exact one way. Maybe you think there is and you can describe the exact one way to do this. But it sounds like you had individual meetings and then are you specifically reaching out to VP of product? Are you like trying to – is there – I don't know. There's VP of marketing at, at Loom uh, mm -hmm. uh, as well that's also in that meeting. Are you literally only going to the VP of product? Are you trying to get everyone in just one meeting that's VP level? Yeah, and so I, the the process for me is going into like the back half of the year. We kind of had to reevaluate our priorities as a business, really focus on efficiency to kind yes. of really get us through the kind of like current economic climate that we're in. And so SEO plays a great 
role in that of it's it's a great, great source of traffic and leads and signups for really any business. And so going into that, like our team was looking for ideas and projects to invest in and to grow from an efficiency standpoint of like, where could we go for scaling back on paid or for scaling back on kind of more expensive marketing? Like what areas can we go in on? And so that was the context of they were looking for ideas and like stuff to do. And so um, hmm. that's where I positioned SEO as the area and the project that we should invest in. And so step one for me was just having a conversation with my manager, who that for me is our VP of marketing and getting buy-in. But I think getting your manager's buy-in is step zero. Like that is yeah. ultimately, <laughs> they will always be your advocate. It's part of their job is to unblock you and find resources. And so um, that was step one. And then for me, step two is as I was formulating my plan of like tactically what projects do I want to work on from an SEO standpoint, I was going and having side conversations with my counterparts. And that would be our you know, director of product, director of engineering, people I knew would be stakeholders in this and getting their buy-in ahead of time and saying, hey, here's where I need your help. Here's where it'll help your team and help your metrics and your goals and overall help Loom as a company. And then uh, I was going into having a meeting with the execs to get their formal buy-in of, yes, we will we will do this. And um. I think there's unique strategies of how you talk to executives too and what information you give them ahead of time coming into a pitch meeting mm -hmm. like that. But um, ultimately just like being able to advocate for yourself in the right way and talk the right language to executives is not something I learned in you outside of just like school of hard knocks and just getting <laughs> it wrong <laughs> a lot of it. times. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Makes sense. So uh, in terms of the timeline yeah, and thinking about search in particular, so you said you're close to a year in probably we're doing other is I don't know there's context of like you maybe it's just the right timing given the economic climate to bring up search in particular maybe you're working on other projects under the growth marketing umbrella is there like should you be hitting the ground running with the that that process as a SEO or growth marketing leader that knows search is a big thing in the first 30 days or do you think you need to like build some other wins to do that like how did, how did you think about that? Yeah. So my, my first 30 days at Loom was a lot of learning and discovery. And it honestly took me a couple of months to really understand our product, how people see Looms, interact with them, and just all of the flows. And so we have our core marketing site with like our blog and other assets. And then every Loom itself is a unique shareable asset too and has its own source of traffic. And millions of visitors watch Looms, but not necessarily millions of people are coming to the marketing site. And so understanding those differences and really just diving into the data and, uh, and just learning. And so my first 30 days was discovery and learning. And that's usually my recommendation for other new people. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen kind of more junior folks come into new roles. And, um, you know, if you're a growth marketer and you just crushed Facebook ads at your last company and you come in and try and rinse and repeat at your new company, like <laughs> I think more often than not, that exact strategy doesn't work the same way it did in the past. And so that's typically my first 30 days recommendation too. And so uh, how I would come in is um, go in and just do that discovery and use that to build what projects that you want to work on, what things you think would have an impact on the business. And then over the next like 60, 90 days is that is where I would go and start getting buy-in and like executing on projects. Um, but also with keeping in mind that just to ruthlessly prioritize and figure out if you're new to a company, finding out what's that one project you can work on and the one thing that you can do that will make the biggest impact and not get distracted by what's probably like a nice, ton thanks. of other opportunities <laughs> to do. And just prioritization, I think is huge in that first 30 days. Nice. That makes sense. Yeah. I, there's a, there's like a whole sales product around LinkedIn sales navigator. It's just like someone just switched jobs, you know, like, and that's yeah. that fresh moment where you potentially can make impact, but it sounds like, which I totally agree with in some ways you're saying like, slow down for a little bit to know what you're recommending. Maybe that's going to help more yeah. credibility in making those arguments, right? Exactly. Yeah. I think you have to like learn and listen, like understand what the problems are first and also what just the goals of the business are and find a project that aligns to those goals. And you'll find that getting getting buy-in, getting someone to say, yes, let's do this is much easier if it kind of like falls up or falls down to whatever the main company objective is. And right now at Loom, that happens to be finding efficient ways to scale the top of our, our marketing funnel. Mm -hmm. And uh, SEO will hopefully be a big lever for that. Nice. So you've warmed people up, it sounds like. You've had that. You've had some intro meetings. People are excited. You go, you're 
you've got a bigger pitch now. People are at least are taking taking the loom ta- or the call, <laughs> yeah. the Zoom or whatever. <laughs> However, you do it internally. How uh, how does that work in practice? What are you bringing to a meeting like that um, tactically? Yeah, uh, and so yeah, we we do have synchronous meetings at Loom. Uh, <laughs> sometimes they happen more often than not, but um, yeah, we do tend to default to async communication. But um, I think for executive conversations, one of the best tips I've gotten is send your information, send your documentation, your slides a day in advance. Uh, and so for us at Loom, we send Looms, we call pre-watch Looms a day in advance of two to three minutes, like a really tight buttoned up summary of, hey, this is what we're going to cover tomorrow. Here's the ask for you. And then here's like a couple of talking points and things you need to know going into the meeting. Mm. So they have you know, 24 hours time to digest and think and come with more thoughtful questions instead of showing up in this meeting with no context and then you just immediately ask them <laughs> for something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I think just like that, like pre-watch ahead of time helps set the stage. Um, and then like getting into the meeting uh, where I've made mistakes in the past is putting the ask at the very end of my slides. And I think for an executive or like a higher level conversation, you need to put the ask like in the absolute beginning of your slides or whatever, like slide one, slide two, like this is exactly what I need. And then back into that ask with your justification and the slides afterwards. Um, I've definitely made that mistake in the past. So executive so, summary effectively. Exactly. Yeah, but okay. like specifically, like here's exactly what I need for you. If I need resources to hire freelance writers, I need to hire an SEO agency. I mm-hmm. need to get engineers to work on a page speed project. Um, I think any of that stuff, like setting the stage first and then, um, let them ask questions afterwards of like, okay, like why, what's the market opportunity, all of that stuff. Um, but really like level setting with the ask. Nice. Yeah. It reminds me of the, um, the Amazon structure, but kind of done a little differently. I don't know if it's inspired by that at all. I don't know if you've heard of it where they, they have a printout pre-meeting oh, that yeah. everyone reads. Yeah. It sounds like the loom version of that. Uh, kind of, yeah. With maybe hopefully better communication with newer technology now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the the way we look at it is like communication is kind of like the mother of all languages. And so if you're able to effectively to communicate effectively, and then that just plays, pays dividends for the rest of your career. And so what we try and do is get that communication out front early and not just like leave it within a meeting, but kind of take it outside of the meeting and also add video and context and like tone of voice to it as well. And uh, we try and really adopt those ideals even when we are moving internally on projects. Nice. So, I mean, I would guess the, the obvious things like total addressable market from search standpoint, like kind of revenue possibility you see is in there. Is there anything like non-standard you'd be putting in a pit or like maybe not those things you'd be putting in that, that deck? Yeah. And so um, what, maybe like non-standard stuff is uh, I think it's easy to be like overly optimistic with SEO projections, like easy to go into Ahrefs or something, like (laughs) plug in a bunch of keywords, get like total estimated monthly volume or like traffic potential and be like, hey, we can go find like a million new visitors a month if we target 200,000 keywords and stuff. And so I think, uh, yeah. And so really being able to like scale back from that, I think is kind of what I narrowed on. And like when I was doing this pitch, like I I did find 200,000 keywords. I looked at the traffic potential in Ahrefs. It was some like crazy high number. And so I showed them that. And then I was like, if we only get 5% of this, then here is also what that looks like. And it's a step change in our metrics too. And so I was kind of real with them of like, this isn't realistic to say that we'll rank on page one, position one for all of these keywords. But if we just get a, just a little bit of it right, then here is the result in terms of traffic and for us like signups to our business Mm -hmm. Uh, and that was what was able to anchor them on like the total opportunity that we had and then that helped kind of say okay this is the potential of just like five percent success and (laughs) yes a hundred percent like let's go all in on this nice nice yeah it makes sense to be uh levels i mean we do that too and projections is you always also for your own like you'll get yes, but then it'll come back around, right? Lagging yeah. indicator uh-huh. will be people will not be happy with you if you, if you if they spend a million dollars and only get whatever. Uh, hopefully, it's still positive ROI. I'm sure, but right. in exactly. search, uh, I think um, that one of the hardest things for me was putting to time box it. Mm-hmm. Of uh, I know the common SEO answer to questions of is it depends of yeah. like whatever the question is like oh the answer is oh it depends on this or that and that's not sometimes not good enough for an executive of, <laughs> you know like when is this going to result when are we going to get traffic from this like saying it depends to them isn't the right answer and so I've struggled with how to time box it to them of like I don't want to just blanket say oh two to three months we'll expect to see some movement or in 12 to 16 months you know we'll we'll see a, a significant improvement of like how to go about 
like properly adding time to this because that's the other part of an equation of yes we know we'll get traffic eventually but then like when does that materialize is it like this quarter next quarter next year because the answer to that kind of depends really changes what their outlook is and if they're like willingness to invest and like mm -hmm. allocate budget for this uh and so like challenging of that uh like time horizon is difficult so are you front i'm guessing their their impulses obviously wanted faster so do you give them that thought process or you like frame it in 12 months, six months, like yeah. what kind of pushback or have you seen? Yeah. yeah. And so I, I did frame it of like, this is the work that we're going to put in. We have, you know, 70% confidence that this will impact, you know, our metrics within the next year. And so here's what we're going to do. And here's the milestones that we're going to check. And so, you know, starting off, if you're investing in new content, what's the velocity you're publishing? If you're publishing, mm -hmm. you know, one blog a month to 10 blogs a month and like measuring how you like stair step up to that mm -hmm. and then going and looking at what's the movement of that new content going from, you know, not being indexed at all to being indexed and then being on, you know, page two or page three and just like kind of talking about the like milestones and progress that you report on um, going that far, but, uh, ultimately going in and saying, Hey, I think this will pay off in two months is not something I wanted to hard commit to. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. I think I gave them the full context of, Hey, this could pay off. We, we can do all the right things. And sometimes it does not pay off in the end, but, uh, we have a couple of like projects going on to hedge against that like uncertain time horizon. And we know yeah. this is the right strategy. It's, uh, a great tactic for not only software companies, but other companies around the world. So we know this is a proven marketing tactic and, we just have to give it time to um, to show up in the metrics. Percolate. Yeah. So is that, did you settle on like, we're going to see something in four months or, or <laughs> even you convinced them 12 months? Yeah. Uh, and so I, I did try and level set like kind of like as far in the distance yeah, yeah. as possible. But um, ultimately what this what this came back to is we were missing our SEO signup targets earlier in the year. And mm -hmm. I had to go to, the, to my team and the execs and say, hey, like, we're investing and we're starting to make changes, but like we don't expect that to impact the sign up number oh, for okay. at least the next three months. And so it was kind of like the reverse a little bit of like we don't expect to see something until three plus months in the future. And so that was helpful context for peers on like other teams too of okay, we know we're going to miss the organic number. And so we know this is a constant. And then what other areas or projects can we invest in from paid or a product standpoint to help fill the gap? And so that like level of honesty. I think was helpful of like, Hey, I'm not going to hit this. Target. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in the future we think we're making the right bets. And so what can we do to fill the gap? Nice. Nice. So, I mean, you touched on some of these things, but in the, in the context of that overall pitch, what are some mistakes you, you've, you've heard people making or you've learned yourself through, through trial and tribulation? Yeah. And so at, at our company, a lot of the SEO projects that are meteor will involve product. And so I need a product manager, I need engineers, I need designers to, to go into these, these projects. And so some of them for us are video SEO related. And so chaptering uh, as it relates to video, being able to have uh, an organic loom that uh, surfaces in the search results, have it more look like a YouTube video than a more native kind of text ad. And so there are a text result. And so there are product and engineering changes that we need to go into that. And so my mistake was not really accounting for the product roadmap that we had in that environment, knowing mm. that we plan this product roadmap out like three to six months in advance. And so I was like, hey, here's this product idea. And they were like, great, but it's not on the roadmap. And so we can't start working on this until some point in the future. And so I was almost a little bit too late. Of It was a good idea. It's something that we want to invest in, but not a project that they can immediately take action on. Got it. Uh, yeah, I like that. I mean, you made me even give you gave me thoughts on we con we will consistently pitch clients on like uh, blog redesign sometimes, yeah. and uh, they're not even in a functional place. And we're used to using Ahrefs and SEMrush numbers and like say twelve months. And reality is, I mean, you can still publish content, but it pushes out the timeline sometimes. And sometimes, realistically, you in a super perfect world, uh, a blog would get redesigned in three months, but no perfect world exists. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're competing with other priorities you're too. Right. And I think that's what's also been helpful for me as I've grown in my career mm -hmm. of learning 
what ultimately is the business trying to achieve? What's the right numbers? And some some SEO projects will contribute to that now or in the future. And then some will take a little bit longer to to pay off and being able to tie those projects back to whatever the goals are. If like a blog redesign will go and really help, then I think that's something to prioritize and stack rank against other product or you know company initiatives. Mm-hmm. Um, for us, a blog redesign hasn't quite made it into the prior- prioritization. <laughs> Your blog list. looks solid. I'm sure you want to look, like change some things. Uh, to, we we yeah. definitely do. But, uh, <laughs> it's 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 lost out against other projects. Uh-huh. Some of them SEO related, some of them not. It's been hard to get buy in for what other teams view as a redesign of the mm-hmm. blog and not a new product, a new feature that can drive top of funnel in a that meaningful way. So it's actually been a like specific project. It's been hard for us to get resourced right hmm. now. Yeah. That makes sense. So for, for people actually uh, actually circling back to uh, the pitch, you've made the pitch. It's positive. Yep. It's not over at that point. Um, how do you maintain that excitement internally? What are what things are you doing to kind of like obviously prove to executive and et cetera team to, that this is the right investment? Like what is your game plan there? Yeah, I think if you, after you make a pitch, you get yes and then you go and you execute. I think probably what's one of the most nerve wracking things for an executive or a high level person after that is just radio silence of like no <laughs> updates, no like any kind of um, communication on like how things are going. And so at Loom, what that looks like is frequent Loom updates that we post in Slack. And then we also post to our HQ internally in the product that where anyone can see. Um, it's me going on there saying, hey, this is my you know biweekly SEO project update. Here's the projects we have in flight. Here's what's done. Here's what's coming up next. And again, very tight, like three, four minutes Mm -hmm. um but just a short update to keep everyone involved and so um that's kind of what happens immediately afterwards on a recurring basis it's just more frequent video updates for us um and then we've pre-scheduled some follow-up meetings and so i have a uh, post pitch follow-up in a couple of weeks of saying hey it's been 30 days you've greenlit here's what we've done we've hired freelance writers we've spun up our content creation we've here's all the pages that we've created and the content that we've worked on mm-hmm. and then here's what is coming up next um i think that will likely turn into a loom instead of a synchronous meeting because okay. uh, i don't think that actually needs to be a meeting but <laughs> the point is uh once you've you've gotten buy-in you've gotten the yes which is the hard part now it's just like communication and being your cheerle- cheerleader and not being radio silent because i think that creates uh like nerves among executives of what uh, what's, what, what's going budget. on yeah, yeah exactly i like that yeah, w- one thing we tell our team to do is beyond we do the obvious like monthly report kind of thing but like any kind of win communicate it like rank page one or get some keywords page one or you win a big keyword or or something like relay relay that to the point of contact so they can also yeah. evangelize internally i mean it sounds like you've got similar internal version of that yeah I, I do the same thing like you I, even like if we post a blog that is like a specific it rolls up to our strategy then i say hey we just posted this here's and here's why like here's where this relates to our strategy and why it's important or we had this thing hit on page one some people can be hesitant to be their own cheerleader and say hey and shout out the wins and stuff mm-hmm. but i think now it's really important to to do that and advocate for yourself and be the champion of your channel is what i usually tell people that report to me is you really have to own this and own the communication of it and don't be shy about um, sharing it among different Slack channels or different groups or whatever, um, because I think that communication ultimately builds confidence in you and your work and your channel, which I think pays dividends long term when you go to ask for pitch number two or three to get to, to get <laughs> get more buy in and stuff. And so that communication is important. Yeah, I like that. I, it we we have an internal value of like be humble but i could see how that's in conflict of like you have to le- it's not not being humble but you got to you got to communicate hey i'm doing a good job here right <laughs> exactly <laughs> in yeah in the correct fashion for sure and then some of that's also like a manager's job too yeah, to to true, lift yeah. up the the direct report that that works for them as mm-hmm. well um but especially now i mean it's it's a hard time for software companies right now and so you have to find the wins and take the wins and celebrate the victories that are there and um i'm the only seo person so if i don't celebrate my victories if i don't socialize <laughs> what's going on then no one knows what's going on and so it's also in my best interest to do that uh thank we have a culture of that at Loom too, which I think is is great to cultivate of a place where people can safely say, "Hey, I did this. I'm super proud of this. Uh, you know, here's the results of all my hard work." And people kind of react and comment and congratulate. Nice, nice. So for those who have 
done a pitch and maybe it's like not gone as successfully. They're a little stuck. Yeah. Any thoughts or ideas for kind of getting unglued? Yeah. And so I think um, to me, it, like really taking a step back and understanding like, where do you think this went wrong? Like where, what did you, did you ask for something that was too much? It was too many resources or like, what, where did your pitch go wrong? And uh, in my experience, I've seen pitches go wrong of people just over explaining complex topics to hmm. executives of uh, really going too deep in the SEO weeds in the way that uh, you would talk to your SEO peers about. It's probably the wrong way to talk to an executive about getting buy-in or for this project. They don't care about links. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, they care yeah. about revenue. You know, it's going it's to make revenue yeah, yeah. or not. And so I like, kind of just understanding like where you went wrong and trying to not use it as a learning opportunity to, to of course, do better the next time. But then mm -hmm. also, uh, yeah, not over-explaining, I think, is uh, a key idea to look back and reflect on. And then also... Uh, who was a detractor who was kind of against your idea or pushed back or asked tough questions that you didn't have the right answers to or didn't have enough research to, whatever the issue was. Mm -hmm. um, and then going and next time you pitch, going and getting that person's buy-in ahead of time and saying, hey, I know last time you were against this. And so now I have this other new idea. And so let's, here's the angle and where I could use your help. And again, having that like one-on-one -on -one conversation, um, I think will help, but uh, ultimately, like that, yeah. yeah, it's just kind of coming back to, are you speaking in a clear way? That's like a clear, here's the the problem. Here's the solution. And like, ultimately what the like right outcome that we're expecting is, is that being translated? And I think that more often is a communication problem and not a like project-based problem. Uh, at least at like in-house companies like mine, where there aren't many SEO people or performance people. I'm mm -hmm. talking to people who are very, uh, just don't know about my area of expertise. And so uh, it's like talking to them, building confidence, and then saying, hey, this is what the outcome is going to be. Got it. You made me think back to the idea of like SEO 101 and that kind of pre-pitch warming people up. Like where's that sitting? Are you pitch? Are you setting the VP of product and SEO 101 loom <laughs> slash deck? Is that like I don't, I'm getting, a, a humble VP would probably – take that well i don't know if anyone would like take that poorly yeah what does that look like in practice? yeah uh, i think it, it loom what that worked out in, to me in practice was it was kind of a slow progress over time right. of like me championing seo and saying hey this is important like i've been talking about investing in this really since like late last year as i was working on other projects on the growth side of like hey seo is an area of opportunity and here's what it is and i am always championing branded search versus non-branded search like every time i do a readout of seo performance I always say, here's the split of our branded versus non-branded mm -hmm. traffic. And mm -hmm. I'm always kind of like taking little moments to educate and not just assuming people know what a non-branded search is. It makes sense when you think about it, but to a non-SEO who spends all their time in product land, like they're yeah, not they just thinking yeah. about that. Yeah. And so it's lots of little I like that, yeah. little mentions over time. And then in this case, like I had a document that at the top was like, hey, here is SEO 101. Here is like the different pillars of SEO from, you know, content, technical, off-page. Here's what we're not focusing on, which our project is not off-page SEO based. Mm -hmm. It's all on-page and technical. Um, um, and then here's what where our like SEO advantages are and here's where some of the risks are and just kind of like level setting everything. And that came in my pre-watch loom and my pre-watch documentation that linked out to a much longer notion document oh, okay. uh, that we used. And so it was like documented and written down, sent asynchronously ahead of time, uh, plus those like little conversations too. Nice, nice. Uh, so uh, tangent sounds like no, you're a big fan of Notion. Yeah, yeah. We use Notion a lot internally. They bring also great partners for us on the on the marketing side hmm. too. And so I write a ton of Notion documents. Um, one, I just kind of bias towards writing a lot and being able to get my thoughts down in a way that someone else can read later. Okay. Uh, but yeah, my 180-day SEO plan is a uh, probably at this point too large Notion document, <laughs> but it's it's everything, everything anyone would want to know about the project, its current status, all of that stuff um, is within Notion for us. But any tool like that that you can document, I think would work too. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. We didn't, we didn't ad adopt it internally, but uh, I've used it personally a few times and it seems strong for documentation for sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, this is kind of a great, I think, thorough way to look at getting an executive buy-in. Are, are there any, like, final tips, thoughts, 
comments we, we didn't touch on, on on the idea? Yeah, I, I think overall, I mean, I kind of touched on this in the beginning of I think most folks fall short, not in the idea, but in the communication of the idea. And in my career, I've been fortunate to have managers and mentors who uh, would sit down with me after I presented to an executive and say, hey, here's what you did well, here's what you didn't. And so if I were to go and coach or help someone else do that who was more junior in their career, it's you just need more at-bats. You know, you're not going to probably win every pitch <laughs> the same way an agency probably doesn't also win every pitch to clients <laughs> yeah, I wish. too. Yeah, 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 nice. But um, that experience is really important and being able to look at it objectively and say, hey, here's where I think this went well and here's where I didn't do go well, uh, I think is important to look at. Um, I used to present to the CEO of a company every two weeks. And so when you do those kind of presentations that frequently you get better, but it was also every two weeks I was getting feedback from my manager of like, hey man, <laughs> this this didn't go well. And here's <laughs> here's exactly why. Uh, not everyone is as fortunate to get that kind of feedback. And so uh, being able to, again, just like look objectively at that stuff and say, hey, I was great here. I didn't do well at explaining this, right? Over explained what internal linking is or mm. backlinks are or whatever, and they fell asleep. I think being able to look at that and just do better next time, I think is just ultimately what it's all about. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I feel like a common theme I'm hearing you say a lot. Uh, you think thoughtfully about management yeah. and people giving you feedback and asking, or, 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 I mean, not everyone might be lucky enough to be getting strong um, management above them, yeah. giving them active feedback. I would guess your guidance would be what, what you should, Search for a company that you have strong management above you, but it helps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, ask ask for feedback if you're not getting that right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think if you're not getting it, or if you're afraid to ask, I think if you're afraid to ask, it probably means you think that there's something in there that's truthful that yeah. would, would be helpful. And so it's hard, but it's also like a learning moment. And I is a growth marketer by career. Like I am always trying to grow and learn both like in the workplace and like outside of work. And really to do that, you need objective third party feedback. And, and some of my favorite things to do as a manager is help mm. coach and mentor and grow people and give them at bats. Um, but yeah, like I have screwed things up. I have messed up pitches. Like a lot of what I talk about kind of comes from my experience <laughs> and uh, going through those, you just kind of build like a list muscle. of all the things. Yeah. And muscle of like things that you've done well and things that uh, didn't go well, but uh, yeah, getting that feedback I think is important. If you're not getting it, then ask for it. And if you still don't get it, then it's, you have a, a conversation with yourself of where can I go to get this feedback that will help me kind of take the next step. Yeah. It's a thing where you just got to get, you, it's pain. It's, it gets more painful if you don't ask for it. It's just like a muscle um, kind of thing. And then hopefully you're getting positive feedback too. That can be tough. And that's what a good manager should be giving you as, as well, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I, I do have a reverse SEO question for you if you want. Sure. Uh, if you, you want to have it. So uh, to go back to our conversation of like, how do you like time box SEO projects? Uh -huh. um, it's something I struggle with. And I don't think I have like fully cracked the code of like, when an executive or someone asked me, hey, like, when do you think this SEO project is going to pay off? I still kind of give a little bit of a wishy-washy answer of like in the future. And so like what what tips do you give to, to your team of like how to have those conversations with with clients? Uh, yeah, a good question. I would guess I would say first question would be relative authority to competitors. Where do you currently sit in the marketplace there? Yeah, we have we definitely have a high domain authority, mm -hmm. but we're lacking a ton of content. Um, okay. So we have lots of links. Our share pages is our a big source of link for us. Like every loom you create is a, in a share subdirectory and those get linked to everywhere. So we have tons of links, but no content to like leverage that. Got it. Yeah. One thing I think about is like some, there's even like relative authority is like Siege has good authority. We have good relative authority, 76 domain rating. Yeah. But in context of our competition, for if we try to rank for like content marketing or something, we're flow actually so we're up against like hubspot and hrefs moz like they're 90s right yeah so it is all in context if you were winning relative to competition normally i think if you have a good content section where things can rank and uh your domain rating is higher than average i, I do think four months to see traction is reasonable okay if it's if you're mid market i nor we normally say like six months is traction okay. And it accelerates, and if you're low, go 12, 12 Longer, nine, twelve, yeah. or not. You won't see anything. Sometimes our 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 directional 
push. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that that makes sense. It's it kind of yeah, we're lucky that we've really we lucked into a lot of like marketing um like like assets or ability at Loom. Like our domain rating is high without us focusing on it at all. Like marketing at Loom is a year ish old, at least a, product, a, yeah. a, a a focus on it. Like it was much a like product led growth company and not mm-hmm. a heavy marketing focus until I and some other folks joined a year, year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and so great to come into a company that has tons of links, tons of authority, but also came with a lot of SEO like baggage or debt of uh, we didn't have, you know, GA or like tracking on our website for a long time. Oh, okay. We had a ton of content that just had like a hundred plus links per blog post, like, like an obscene amount of links and not a lot of word count. And so mm. going and like unwinding some of that was a challenge, but it also made it an, an environment where SEO just wasn't ever top of mind of when they're making new changes or shipping new features that could impact page speed or performance or break a link and there's no redirect between the two. And so, uh, it's been, I've had to like build up that foundational knowledge a little bit and uh, your kind of advice on how the time horizon of how long these things take, I think is is helpful because there was really no one else internally who had any knowledge of that. So okay. kind of going in there with like, hey, here's what we should expect. And those expectations are kind of sent out throughout like the rest of the company that works on like SEO related projects. Yeah, and make, I'm for sure there's bias in my recommendation of we're very often at least like getting some infrastructure mm-hmm. is at least there when I give that number. Yeah. Like sounds like to, to your point, some of it wasn't there. So you can't even like publish content necessarily or w- without those gaps, obviously, as we sort of talked on as a theme, maybe that pushes it out three months, which is never fun. <laughs> Hard to make, get arguments, get stuff done when you say 12 months from now, but yeah, it, it's, it's almost like an impossible conversation. Yeah. Of, yeah just, we need to do this, but it won't pay off until next year. And then it's like, well, why should we do this now? We can just go run a bunch of Google ads or something <laughs> and like put input budget there. But like there is nuance of how you have that conversation and something I'm always getting better at too, but it's hard uh, being the only SEO, one of the only like growth focused people at a company and trying to come in and be an advocate of change and advocate mm-hmm. for your projects is challenging and not not easy and so uh yeah hopefully i was able to give uh some good advice no, to people yeah, but yeah. people are welcome to find me on linkedin as well and uh, ask me more questions send me a loom of course i'm always i'm always, I'm always happy to, <laughs> nice. to, 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 to respond to those uh but yeah hopefully that that helps nice yeah i mean it's it sounds challenging but obviously i would ex- imagine exciting too to be like you have the ability to have an amazing case study of growth, I would think. And I'm sure you're going to realize that. <laughs> Not going oh, but absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the opportunity, I think, is yeah. is is huge. And so just to be able to go in and work on these projects and get buy-in and get people excited about mm-hmm. SEO or whatever project I'm working on, I think is is empowering to be able to go in and, and do that. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully if the, when this is this is all over, we'll I have a check-in in a year. Yeah. I would love to. Yeah, let's do it. Put, <laughs> sign me up. Yeah, put yeah. me on the calendar. But uh, yeah, I think being able to look back and say, hey, I did this and this is the results that we drove and uh, even though i am the only seo person at loom like i am i don't operate in a silo i have resources and budget and stuff Mm -hmm. and so even that uh it's something that my manager is helping coach me through right now is uh you're you're never alone there are people who are want to help and help lift you up and give you resources and guidance you have to ask and just you know find that support Mm -hmm. there but uh, even as a sole person there are ways and resources you can tap into to get help uh, to push your projects forward, it's a, to hire a contractor, an agency, and uh, there's always options. You're never just like the one person. Uh, it does it does take uh, a whole team to get some of these for things sure, done. For sure, for sure. I I would correct myself. We're, don't we're not going to check in a year. We'll check in in four months. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about that. That's a little. <laughs> that's a little too. Soon. We won't tell the loon team. I'm, I'm guessing a few of them might might watch this. Uh, I'm know. sure. I'm sure they will. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on, Nick. This hey, is great. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it. it.